A good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here, Friday now, the 8th of November, 2024. Now, don't be going and getting mad at me when I present to you later on in the update the possibility that we could have one more something to deal with. I mean, I'm just telling you what I'm seeing in the guidance, and the guidance is beginning to hint pretty strongly that we're going to see one more development at least as we keep moving through the month of November. Now, at some point, all of this has to get shut off because eventually the cool, dense, dry air over North America will eventually drain down across the Caribbean and scour all of this stuff away. But we still might have one more to deal with. But before we get to that, we still have Raphael, which is out there right now. And this is the hurricane that might just put us over the top of being a hyperactive season by definition, meaning that basically, with the exception of name storms, this hurricane season lived up to at least the more reputable agencies' forecasts of a very busy, potentially historic season. I think the historic part definitely came to pass. And now with all these other metrics, you know, the data is in. And there was even a couple of storms that probably could have been named and that name storm count would have been getting really close to exhausting the list. Just saying. All right, so let's take a look and see what we got out there. As always, thank you for tuning in. Hey, look at that. That's an unusual track, isn't it? Well, that's typical, I think, for November because there's all sorts of shenanigans happening with the steering patterns north of any tropical cyclones because we're transitioning from a summer and tropical pattern through fall, eventually toward winter. So what do you get? You get a hurricane that develops down here and moves on up because you had some pretty strong ridging sitting over this way and uh, that ridging built in even more. I mean, it is just sultry down here in the southeast where I am. Muggy at night, warm and muggy during the day and lo and behold, you get a system like Raphael that is doing all kinds of wackadoodle things and finally it'll just get shoved south here into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, mainly because it's going to lose its deep convection and just be kind of pushed around by a big old area of high pressure that's just going to be dominant over the western Atlantic and the eastern United States, troughing generally out west with our storm path pretty much right through here. And that's why you're counting the snow in feet in part of New Mexico and Colorado. Quite the interesting clash of seasons, and it's not over yet. So here's a really cool stat. Andrew is one of our supporters and patrons and a good friend of ours already. Known him for just such a short time. Nice contributor on our Discord. And I like these graphics that Andrew makes up because they are very helpful to kind of visualize things. Isn't this hard to believe? But it is true that way back on September 23rd, the A score was only 60. And we were all thinking, man... The forecasters, all the experts, me included, I'm a hurricane expert, I don't do seasonal forecasts myself, but I interpret them, I see if they make sense, and everything certainly did seem to make sense in April and May and June when all these hyperactive forecasts were put out. It all added up, it looked like, yeah, we were going to really have a big season. But by September 23rd, that A score sitting at 60, we were definitely doing a lot of this, like, man, something happened. And we're going to have to revisit the science, it looks like, and figure it all out, which still needs to be done. While we had that very quiet period, that does need to be examined, absolutely. But look what has happened since then. You know, we have almost added 100 ACE units since September 23rd, because we're almost there. We're almost to that hyperactive mark of 160. As of the time that Andrew posted this, we were at 157.2. And I do believe that Raphael will put us over the top. So that's very interesting. And this is an important metric. It really is because it tells us that the quality of the hurricanes this year were substantial. And boy, they certainly were. So here we are at the uh, bigger picture. No longer need to even look out this way in the eastern Atlantic. We'll do that in 2025. We're going to focus our attention now on the western part of the Atlantic Basin over here. And, you know, to some degree, the Eastern Pacific, even though that season should be 100% done. Climatologically, there's a little time left on the clock, but we'll see. Boy, look at that piece of energy. There you go. That's what I was talking about. 
and uh, your troughiness and upper level energy here. Big fat ridge sitting out over the Atlantic, and that's keeping Raphael from coming up north towards Louisiana or Mississippi uh, or anywhere. And it's had its better days, starting to feel the effects of some wind shear, but mostly some pretty dry air starting to get in there and collapse those thunderstorms. And we can see that here as we zoom in a little bit closer. The eye sitting right in here somewhere, I do believe. Uh, and it's starting to struggle just a little bit. The mechanics of it are all getting interrupted by different adverse, you know, parameters in the atmosphere. Honestly, the dry air, some shear, um, that'll all take its toll. But it'll take a few days. This is going to still mill around a little bit and then eventually head down in this direction. And it'll just dissolve away. And I can't wait to show you that over the coming days because it is fascinating. I mentioned that yesterday, how these things can go away is sometimes really as interesting as how they form. And uh, right before our eyes, this once very powerful Category 3, you know, even overnight last night, Category 3 again is going to succumb to forces greater than it and it's going to die away. All right. And it's going to do so without too much impact. But you know what? I forgot to pull up my weather.gov. I don't think my telestrator is going to let me because of the hotkeys. So I'll just draw it in. I'll use this blue color. You do need to be careful all up through here. Uh, heck, and maybe even all of the Gulf, really. Just pay attention because this is sending out the swells, and uh, that will impact beach conditions. If you're heading to the beach this weekend, just please keep that in mind. I was going to try to get to the weather.gov site, but the letter W is one of my hotkeys for this Telestrator over here, so I can't. I'm held hostage. It's okay. Uh, my point is, please pay attention to the local surf conditions all throughout this area and the Yucatan anywhere, all right? Because this will have indirect impacts on you uh, directly if you're there, obviously, but this will have some impacts, so just keep that in mind. National Hurricane Center homepage, just a real quick look at the stats. Still looking at a pretty powerful hurricane out there at 110 miles per hour. Pretty darn low pressure there for November. This, nothing more than a disturbance, but that disturbance still bringing quite a bit of rainfall and inclement weather through this region. I talked about that with you yesterday. The same is holding true today. Going back to the satellite imagery here, that, that wide shot, there is that disturbance still trying to do something with itself, but it's running into the islands and just the overall conditions are not too conducive. But there is some energy sitting out here that is going to wind up over here and interact with this Central American gyre deal again. And that is where we're going to have to really start watching in the days to come. And hey, Andrew gets two mentions today because he posted this graphic. And this is telling the tale. This is coming out of the ECMWF EPS. That's the Ensemble Prediction System. And it is highlighting the probability of a tropical depression. Just a depression. You know, we're just looking at that right now. And those odds are starting to creep up, as you can see here in the legend over on the right. Somewhere down in this region. I already got Raphael sitting over here. And the valid time through this is through the next six days, through day, uh, days four through six. And so with that being said, let's see what the operational, <coughs> excuse me, one last remnant of the old cold there. Let's see what the operational GFS shows first with Raphael in here. Watch this. There's all that green, which is uh, decent humidity for that system to keep thriving. And that's the current situation. But watch what happens in very short order. The brown starts to take over lower humidity values within the next two days. Ugh, it's just going to wither away and then get pushed to the south as a low-level swirl. And uh, this will really be neat. Honestly, Monday morning we're going to do a live update, the, uh, the YouTube Live Monday morning. Yeah, absolutely. Wait till I show you what that looks like on Monday morning. You might want to shield your eyes. It's going to be, you know, pretty gruesome the remains of what was once a hurricane. But again, that stuff meteorologically is fascinating. It's amazing when you see them with that very well-defined eye and all the stuff that goes on with that. As long as they're not hitting land, you know, make that very clear. When they hit land, it's bad, obviously. But it's also equally fascinating to see them just kind of dry up out there and just go away. This is literally just going to dissipate in the Gulf of Mexico. When is the last major hurricane that got into the Gulf and then just died away. That one, that's going to be the last one to do that. That's amazing to see. So let's switch this over now to the Vort signature, the Vorticity. And look at this. All right, this is really interesting here. Let's use 
this deep blue color to make it pop. 72 hours out. That's just three days. Ah, look at what we've got there. The makings already of our seedling system. And I'm going to tell you what, folks, this is your classic setup. It really is. Big old fat Bermuda High sitting out here, the western extent of the subtropical ridge, and your southeasterly flow coming in, still muggy and just nasty for November. You know, for April, May, whatever, that's probably fine. But it's a very typical setup. And if we look at the upper levels uh, of the atmosphere, look at that. Pretty darn favorable. Light winds generally down in the Caribbean. Nothing too dramatic to shear this thing apart as it tries to get going. So again, that's day three. Move this on out to day four. And you can even start to see some of the banding with it already. And even in the vorticity signature, clear as day. Four days out. Finally, day five. Absolutely. Still festering down there. And then day six. And then day seven. 168 hours out. I show this because that's how far the graphical tropical weather outlook will go. As well as their text product. See? the And it doesn't show up yet because there's just not enough for the Hurricane Center to put the little yellow area down here. But I think that's coming. And here you go. By day seven looking like a bona fide system trying to get going, the upper levels of the atmosphere, that's almost textbook. I mean, it's right under the anticyclone for the most part. You can see that very clearly. Look at that, the way the air is just spreading out here clockwise, sitting above that feature and helping to evacuate the air very nicely here to the north. We're going to have to watch this very, very closely. Our friends in Central America, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Cuba, beyond that, We'll see. You know, I don't want to start speculating because that can be, you know, there's no reason to. Beyond a week out, forget about it. There's just absolutely too much chaos. But over the next week, let's just rewind this back. Let's see how that evolves. Raphael dissipates. That next system tries to take shape. And yes, we're going to have to watch that. And look what the date is a week out. November the 15th. That is about as late as I've ever gone. I have to look up. When was Nicole two years ago. I have to look that one up. I was down there for Nicole in southeast Florida for that landfall. Stood in the eye of that one. And then, of course, we had Tropical Storm Ada. Anyway, getting ahead of myself. We'll just have to wait and see. Might be one more that we definitely have to keep an eye on. And I hate to keep bringing this up, but this keeps just shocking me. It does. All right. The anomalies down here still holding strong. That's not shocking. But look, this keeps on getting warmer and warmer relative to average. Meaning, look at the date, the deeper into November we go, the cooler this should be naturally, and it's not. So the anomaly, the difference between what it is and where it should be, some of these water temperatures up here, if you look at the scale down here, the legend, you're talking three to four degrees Celsius warmer than average. And that is just remarkable. It really, really is. Not that I think that that will have much bearing on what might be trying to develop down here, but it is remarkable to see. And then all that moisture getting pulled into that system way over here. No wonder it's snowing by the feet in parts of the Rockies. There's just so much moisture available. Anyway, wild weather for sure. And the possibility of one more. And by the way, if we do get it and it gets named, the name will be Sarah. And uh, we'll be up to just a couple more after that. I think two or three more, whatever it is. 21 names on the list. Uh, so what was after Sarah? What is it? Tony? And then maybe v Valerie and Will? I don't know. I should just stop because I'm going to mess up. You guys know. Leave it in the comments. You can educate me. It's been a long year. I don't have to know everything. I do know the next one, though, is Sarah. And that might be it. We shall see. All right. So I'll do an update tomorrow and an update Sunday. They'll be really quick, pretty much just watching how this evolves. And then we'll get together Monday morning, 9 a.m. for a YouTube live session. Because by then, if this is going to happen, we should have an outlook from the National Hurricane Center, I would think. And we're going to have a lot to discuss. All right. Have a good rest of your Friday. As always, thanks for tuning in. From all of us at Hurricane Track, I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll talk to you again tomorrow afternoon.